Hi, in this video we're going through the different apartments, including the high-end apartments needed to start early heists in GTA 5 Online. Hi and welcome back, my name's Dan and I'm an old grumpy gamer. Grand Theft Auto is a truly massive game. Between GTA 5 and the constant updates and Rockstar for GTA Online, there's no shortage of new content and interesting things to do. Join me then as we look at the different apartments in GTA 5 Online. Before we dive in, if you're new to the channel, we do how-to guides, news and giveaways, so consider subscribing and ring the bell to stay up to date. Oh, and I'd like to give a quick shout out to Zisto, who did a great apartment guide back in the day and a lot of their recommendations have made their way into this guide so there's a link to Zisto's original work in the description below. So first things first, why on earth would you want an apartment or more specifically a mid or high end apartment? Well there's a few core reasons. Some additional garage space and depending on your budget and location you can have between 2 and 10 additional vehicle parking spaces. An additional spawn point, unsurprisingly the apartments have a bedroom so you can spawn in. This can be handy if your businesses are nearby or alternatively if you want somewhere to spawn on the other side of the map to all your stuff and access to heists. So the high-end apartments give you access to a series of heists. Uh, they're designed for noobs but sadly they can't be done solo. So as you may have gleaned by now there are several different types of apartment available to purchase. We have low-end, medium and high-end and with the high-end broken down further into standard, stilt and customizable penthouse. Now typically I'd go through each different property location and the cost at this point but with north of 55 apartments available at the time of recording, that's um, impractical. Instead, let's go through a quick summary and recommendation for each type of apartment. Starting with the low end. These range in price from 80 grand to 121,000 and come with two garage spaces and room for one push bike. Beyond the very limited vehicle storage, they do nothing but provide a spawn point. Honestly, these are more or less a waste of money. At the time of recording in 2022, there are plenty of other places you can spawn in and if you're only looking for garage space then you're better off forking out 25 grand for the La Mesa garage. If I was to recommend a low-end apartment, I mean I don't, but if I had to the only one worth considering would be 0232 Polito Boulevard in Polito Bay at 121,000. That gives you a spawn point at the very top of the map which is kind of handy but even then my next recommendation will can that anyway. Which brings me to medium grade apartments. Medium apartments are a little neater and a little larger and they range in price from 125,000 to 175,000 and includes storage for up to six cars and two pushies. Similar to the low end apartments, these have no cash making facilities, so they're not much more than a spawn point and a bit of extra parking. Again, similar to the low end apartment, I really don't think these are a great investment either. There's better ways to spawn in and cheaper ways at the additional parking. If I was to recommend one, the only one I'd consider is 4584 Procopio Drive in Polito Bay. It's more or less in the same location as as the low end apartment I was just telling you about. So you get that spawn point in the northwest of the map. But at 155,000, that's only 30k more than the low end apartment, it's probably a slightly less rubbish investment. Next up is the high end apartments. These can be solid investments as they look much nicer and grant you access to five different heists. The Fleecer Job, which has a maximum payout of 143,750. Prison Break, which has a maximum payout of half a mil. Humane Labs Raids at a maximum payout of 600. 175,000, Series A funding at a maximum payout of 505,000, and the Pacific Standard, which has a maximum payout of 1,250,000 plus first time bonuses. Your individual earnings will vary depending on your split, and unfortunately, none of these can be done solo. But you can do the fleecer with two people. So if you have a mate you kick around with regularly, that's a pretty easy way to go. The other heists require four team members. So if you're part of a crew, this can be a great entry point into the heist. With a low cost, barrier and not much experience needed. You can also do this with randos but that's not an efficient way to spend a day. So there's three distinct types of high-end apartments. Each has the same facilities that's 10 garage spaces, six spots for bicycles and a bed so they can act as a spawn point. The core difference is the layout and aesthetic of the interiors. Starting with the standard high-end apartment. These are spacious, inviting and often have great views depending on which one you get. Location wise it's much of a muchness. They're all located in 
the city and range in price from about 200,000 through to 500,000. You have two types of interior to choose from too. Starting with the original interior, which is available in apartments from 200,000. This is pretty neat, but it can be a little dated. I'd only really consider this option if you only value the facilities provided by an apartment and don't give a rats about the aesthetic. My pick for the original interior standard high-end apartment would have to be apartment 10, three outer street tower. This is a plum location, more or less in the center of the city with great highway access. It's also one of the cheaper options at 217,000. If you're looking for a standard high-end with a more up-to-date aesthetic, the updated interior version is the way to go. The layout and facilities are pretty much identical, but the color scheme and general decoration is a little more modern. Oh boy, do you pay for it though. The cheapest of these is more or less double the original look, starting at 468 grand and taking you through to about half a mil, depending on your location. They are much prettier though. If you're thinking the updated interior is the go, I'd recommend apartment 28 for Integrity Way. It's the second cheapest at 476 grand and has great highway access. The views aren't super flash, but it's still a nice place to kick around. Next up, we have the Stilt high-end apartments. These are a bit more out of the way and provide a refreshing change to the high rises and compact apartments in the city. You get more floor space with these and they have a great aesthetic. And they're pretty safe as long as the tennis coach keeps it in his pants. So the Stilt apartments start at 449 grand and go all the way up to 800,000. Again, they have all the same interiors and facilities. That's 10 cars, six bikes and a bed. So it all comes down to location, location, location. Before I get to my recommendation, there is a particularly annoying quality of life quirk with the stilt apartments that should be noted. Unlike the other types of apartments or indeed almost any other type of property with a garage space, you can't access the garage directly from the interior. Instead, you have to exit the apartment, go for a quick toddle and then enter the garage again. So that's a whole extra loading screen that you have to deal with, which seems like a small quirk, but it can become rage inducing after a few hours, especially if you're in a busy lobby, which can make the game hang on loading screens. My recommendation for the stilt apartment would be 2044 North Conquer Avenue in Vinewood Hills. It's one of the more expensive options at $762,000, but it has a glorious deck area overlooking the city, which is a stunning place to hang about in the evening or overnight. Finally, onto the customizable high-end apartments. Now, when I say customizable, we're not talking casino penthouse customizable, we're talking different color scheme and decor packs. It's neat, but not life-changing. The customizable apartments range from 905,000 to 1.1 million. Given they're in the same building, the only difference between the apartments is the view. With the cheaper options, penthouse suites one and two, overlooking the Vinewood foothills and the observatory. The most expensive, penthouse three, overlooks the city and Vespucci beach. It's a nice view, but I'm not sure it's 200 grand worth of nice view. Each to their own though. And while we're here, we might as well check out all of the customizable bits of the apartment. We have eight interiors to choose from. And don't worry too much if you find you don't like the one you pick once you're in the apartment. You can always change it in your apartment management interactions menu, although it does cost a bit. So the options are modern, moody, vibrant, sharp, monochrome, seductive, regal, and aqua. And that's more or less it for the customizable high ends. Honestly, because the location is identical, unless you desperately need that city aspect, just go for the cheapest. You probably won't spend too much time gazing out the window anyways. Whew, that was a lot to take in. I'm glad we have options, but damn. Okay, so once you've made your decision, find somewhere safe and bring up your in-game phone. Head to the internet, money and services, then Dynasty 8 and view the property listings on the left. You'll see some filters up the top, click the appropriate one which will limit the listings to the type of apartment you want to grab. Oh and don't worry about the pricing, I picked this up during an event week. Keeping an eye on the left column, scroll down until you see the one you'd like and click buy and that will take you through to a details page. Have a quick read and if you're happy and you're not buying a customizable apartment, click purchase property. If you've decided to go for a customizable high-end apartment, there's an extra step, select interiors. If this is the case, click that and toggle through the different decor options. And once you're happy, then click purchase property. Now, if this is your first apartment, you'll get a confirmation screen with a prompt to return to the map. Just click the X up the top of the internet to return to the game. If this is not your first apartment, you'll be booted out of the internet, which is a little jarring if I'm honest, and you'll have a new menu up the top left of the screen. Now you can have up to five apartments, which is super handy if you want spawn points dotted all over the map. So looking at the top left again, if this is not your first apartment, you'll have the options to either trade in an existing apartment for 50% of its purchase value, or you can select the empty slot to have a second apartment. I'm trading mine in, so let's click on the first filled slot there, and that will swap the Drydock Street property for the new apartment I'm purchasing.
missing. If you wanted to keep the other apartment, simply pop down to the empty slot and select that instead. If you're trading in, you'll get a quick interrupt screen confirming your choice. Then you'll be thrown back into the real estate site with a confirmation message. Just click the X up the top of the internet to return to the game. Once you're done, head back out to the lobby, set a marker on the map, that'll be the home icon, and head over to your new place for a bit of an explore. And if it's a high-end apartment, when you and your mates are ready, head into the highest planning room and you can start earning. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. Check out the video up the top for another property and business guide or the one down the bottom for some more old grumpy gamer goodness. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you in the next video.